Hi everybody, welcome back to another C++ lesson. Today we're going to be continuing the discussion about polymorphism by extending our uh, repertoire, I guess, to include virtual functions. Uh, virtual functions are sort of the real use of polymorphism, like like what we did in the last video was cool and like that sort of opens the door but this is really why you'd want to use polymorphism is to take advantage of virtual functions so I'm gonna go ahead and use like sort of the classic example for this uh, basically what a virtual function is is you know how when we have uh, inheritance set up we can have the parent pointer point to an instance of the base class or any of the base classes well that was sort of cool in the last video but what's more cool is when you put a function you know a different function in the ba in the different base classes and then you can use a parent pointer to point to that function but uh, the function might not it might do something different depending on which child uh, that particular instance is so this will make more sense with an example so we're gonna have a base class shape and uh, it doesn't have any members um, and I'm not even going to give it any uh, arguments or anything like that. I mean, you could have a name or something, but I'm just going to leave it blank. Uh, but one important thing to put as sort of as this as a method for the shape class is virtual int calculate area. So uh, you do actually have to define this, though there's a way to not do that, which we'll talk about probably in the next video. It's a pretty short idea. Um, but for now, you do have to go ahead and put curly brackets here, but you're not expecting to actually create a shape object. Uh, the real This is just sort of an empty base class, and then we'll make like a rectangle, which is going to inherit from the shape class. Oh, uh, so, okay, so rectangle is a type of shape, so that inheritance makes sense, but this time it's going to have a width and a height. And so then we'll have this have a constructor. So basically what we're going to do here is um, have a couple different uh, children that inherit from the shape class and then they'll all have their own way of implementing the calculate area function. So here in the rectangle class, we have int calculate area. Notice we don't hit, we don't uh, type virtual again. It's just as if it's a normal method. Um, and so I'm just going to say return with times height, and that's good. So this is pretty simple. I mean, if we weren't using inheritance here, this wouldn't be anything new. It just looks like there's a method. Uh, in our rectangle class called calculate area, so that's not that uh, crazy. And then I'll make another shape. This is a circle, which will only have a radius. And so that can have something like this. All right, so when you calculate the area for a rectangle, it's not the same as when you calculate the area for a circle. But sort of theoretically, any shape should have this calculate area function. So, okay, so for a circle, it's uh, pi r squared, so I'll just use 3.14159 as a little approximation for pi. Um, and then times r times r, so we're squaring r. Uh, by just multiplying r by itself, and then also pi, of course. Oh, one more thing. You don't actually have to do this because the compiler would do it for you, but uh, notice we're returning an integer here. If you wanted it to be more precise, you could maybe return a float or something, but I just decided to use an integer. We're returning an integer here, but this is going to be uh, not integer data because 3.14159, I think, is automatically a float because it has decimals. Um, so, sort of good practice is to go ahead and typecast um, your result to an integer, even though the compiler would actually do this for you since your return type is an integer, sometimes you'll get a warning and it's just better practice to go ahead and do it explicitly rather than relying on the compiler. Okay, so that's it. Now in main, 
I'm gonna well first let's just demonstrate that the uh, the different classes work so I'll make a rectangle and a circle a radius of 7 Um, and so what we're going to do here is, after after we go ahead and make sure that the classes are working, we'll make shape pointers. So, right, that's the parent class pointer uh, that point to our, uh, our little instances here. And then we can use the pointers to call this function, even though the function isn't actually the same um, for the different classes. Let's see, what did I forget? Oh, I'm sorry, this should just be radius times radius. Kind of a long line. Okay, that's it. Right, so that makes sense. Rectangle area is 150. Circular, circle area, 153. I guess that's about right, because this is about 3, and maybe 49 times 3, plus a little bit. So, yeah, I might make that a different number, just so it's not, it doesn't look so similar to the rectangle. But So I'll make it like 3. All right, so now so now take a look at this. Because we've set up inheritance, we can use polymorphism and go shape uh, pointer. Uh, I'll call it SR because it's like shape rectangle equals address of our rectangle, and a shape pointer SC equals our address of C. And so now C, instead of uh, instead of calling the rectangle instead of calling calculate area from the rectangle object we can call it using our shape pointer and I'm not going to type it out for circle too but I mean that's the basic premise is that it's we can oh the sorry sorry this should be SR so we could put these in an array by the way like we did in the last video so these could be like just a shapes array and so we could put in SR and SC and also any other number of shapes you wanted and then sort of do a for loop that is less than two right now uh, so this is just gonna sort of clean up the output but Really, what makes this it, what makes this cool is that this is different functionality. Uh, you know, when we call calculate area from the SR pointer, uh, and when we call calculate area from the SC pointer, they're not actually calling the same function, right? So that's the key difference. In the last video and in any video when we were talking about inheritance, if we went ahead and gave shape a, a function, the base class of function, when we call that function. Uh, off of a rectangle object or off of a circle object or off of a base object pointer it doesn't matter what that pointer is pointing to it's gonna call the function in shape because we haven't made it virtual by making it virtual that means that this function can then be overridden in the shape I'm sorry in the uh, children classes and then we're calling a completely different function but by the same name and from the same type of pointer and that's what makes this cool and very useful. So, okay, I think this should work. Good. All right, so see, the the cool thing here is we're calling, this is the rectangle area from shape one and the uh, circle area from shape two, but they're both being pointed at by shape pointers and it's the shape pointer that's calling the uh, individual calculate area function. So why might this be useful? Suppose, I mean you could set rig this up with input and make it like uh, type 1 if you want to make a rectangle, type 2 if you want to make a circle, maybe you could add more shapes, figure out a triangle or a trapezoid or whatever you want. And then instead of having to have like a trapezoid array, a circle array, and a rectangle array that you then have to pass in depending on uh, what type the user wants. You can just have a shape pointer array and then depending on what type the user wants you then make a new shape pointer 
which points to the type of shape that they want. But then you only have one array and you don't have to worry about having all kinds of different arrays. Or an example that I sort of had a few videos ago when we sort of set up the RPG thing, you could give the player a weapon pointer rather than giving the player like a sword or giving the player a magic attack or giving the player both and then like having one in an active state or something like that. You could give the player a weapon pointer and then you could when you have player dot attack that could just be like weapon arrow uh, attack enemy okay and you could have both the um, sword class have an attack enemy method and the magic attack class have that method and then the compiler, not really the compiler, but sort of the program, I mean the player isn't really going to worry about whether their weapon is a sword or, I mean the player in the code isn't going to worry about whether their weapon is a sword or a magic attack, but all the player has to do is call attack enemy and then depending on what kind of object the uh, weapon pointer will be pointing at, it'll do the appropriate action. It's, this has a lot of application and, it's, and is very useful and can make some really elegant uh, game design designs that make everything really cool in my opinion and uh, efficient and very elegant. One last thing before I go, you should just know that a virtual function uh, ha takes very very slightly more overhead than a normal function and so what overhead means is it's a little bit slower every time you have to call a virtual function the compiler has to go through what are called v tables which are pointers to different functions and it has to figure out sort of which function to call because it's not quite as straightforward now this is a very very slight performance bump and you'd only notice if this is being called like a thousand times I, I don't even know if you would notice it at that point but um just something to note so you don't go and just make every function virtual because that's not what you want to do. Okay, that's it for virtual functions. Um, not sure what the next video will be about. Maybe about what I mentioned earlier, which is abstract classes. Uh, that'd be a pretty short video. So, yeah, maybe that'll be the next video. But this function was just about virtual functions. Or, I'm sorry, this video was just about virtual functions, which let you... Uh, sort of change the functionality of one function from a parent class in any number of base classes and uh, by doing so you add a much deeper level of functionality to your inheritance chains. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.